All right, I think we can start. And thank you so much for joining this session today. I'm very sorry I cannot join you guys. I wasn't sure that I will have uh, success getting to Oslo, but yeah, welcome to the conference. I hope your day was great. And today, uh, right now, I would like to talk about desktop development in .NET 6. First, very quickly about me, I'm a senior program manager at Microsoft working on .NET team, and my primary focus is .NET desktop. So I am PM of WinForms, WPF. I also work on .NET MAUI together with my coworkers, and I'm, um, I'm spending a lot of time on a porting story from older .NET platforms to .NET 6 or the latest .NET. So if you have any questions, feel free to pin me on Twitter anytime and uh, I'll find the, the answer or I'll connect you to people who can talk to you about your issues. And first, very briefly, I wanted to talk about .NET in general. What is that? And that's our latest platform. So you probably all know .NET Framework and then we had .NET Core. Uh, we also had .NET Standard as another option to target and uh, Xamarin was available in MAUI, so in .NET 6, we connected everything in one cross-platform open source uh, solution. Uh, that is a unified development platform for building anything. You can use the same tools, libraries, language, and runtime to build any application across web, mobile, desktop, uh, AI, data, gaming, and IoT workloads. And .NET, in general purpose programming platform, uh, enables all kinds of applications and scenarios. Once you learn one, you can easily pick another. To enable specific app scenario, app model, or uh, app framework, uh, you're building on top of the base libraries and runtime uh, to expand what .NET can do. So it's one common base libraries it's uh, same apis all over the place same language you don't need to learn different technologies you can stay in the same ecosystem and uh, .NET has a vast ecosystem of thousands of libraries uh, library packages uh, via NuGit and open source projects in development on github there are also hundreds of vendors providing aiding component Aiding components, tools, libraries, and services. And you can use a broad set of IDs. There is Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, Visual Studio Code, and even CLI if you prefer that. So .NET 6 um, has a huge uh, involvement of open source community. Uh, .NET ecosystem has been uh, has got significant momentum in the last few years. There are now 5.4 million monthly active developers in Visual Studio family of tools. And .NET Core and .NET 5 has ranked number one three years in a row as the most loved framework on Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Cloud Native Computer Foundation tracks the highest velocity projects on all of GitHub. They measure this by the rate of pull requests, uh, and issues that come in and how many are uh, accepted. Uh, the .NET repo have been consistently in the top 30 uh, since 2017. And there are almost 7,000 uh, people outside Microsoft that made over 21,000 contributions. They filed issues or submitted pull requests, suggested features uh, to the .NET related repositories for .NET 6 release. And if you're one of them, I want to thank you. Thank you very much for helping us building those platforms together. And I wanted also to talk very quickly about .NET 6 performance. We're always focused on having the best performance. Uh, here you can see the Tech Empower performance comparison with Java and Node.js. And better performance leads to lower computer cost and .NET gets better every release. Many of these improvements were made by the community, by the way. So .NET 6 web framework, ASP.NET Core, is still over 10 times faster than Node.js. 
And we've also worked really hard on entity framework core performance. EF core performance on .NET 6 has improved 92% over .NET 5. And that gain you just get in from simply moving from .NET 5 to .NET 6. Also, query performance is 36% better than .NET 5. So .NET 6 is released. We just released this this November, and it has unified common base libraries and SDKs, uh, great performance, simplified development, easier to get started. Uh, you probably heard or will hear about C Sharp 10 improvements. We also have F Sharp 6 released. Uh, we have support for Apple Silicon ARM 64, and .NET 6 is a long-term version. What that means that we're going to support it for three years and recently with .NET, we switched to a new schedule. Now we're releasing a new version every year. We received the feedback that before, the way we were doing it before when we were releasing it, whenever we had something to release was not optimal for you guys because you wanted more like predictable schedule and now we promise to release a new version every year and every second year that will be a long-term version. So one year we're innovating, we're introducing new APIs and second year we are stabilizing everything and we're supporting every second version for longer time. So for those who prefer to switch only once in a while, you can stay on longer version. You have about three years before you migrate. And also, we released Visual Studio 2022 that has absolutely great tooling and many improvements. And these are features specifically for desktop. Uh, so we have Hot Reload. We have XAML Live Preview. I will show both further in the talk. We have IntelliCode improvements such as whole line completion, suggestions for COML code refactoring on the fly. Uh, we have built-in Git and GitHub integration to clone repo, manage work items and pull requests, and automatically set up CI/CD workflows to GitHub Actions and Azure. And Visual Studio 2022 is the first 64-bit version of Visual Studio, so it can take advantage of the full power of your dev box to work on projects of any size and scale. Uh, to get it, go to visualstudio.com and download it today. And of course, there is a GA version. There is also a preview version that has the latest features. So one special thing that I wanted to spend time to talk separately is Hot Reload. In this Visual Studio, we got Hot Reload everywhere. That's one of my favorite feature and we've enabled it for all platform. It's WinForms, WPF, MAUI, uh, everywhere. Uh, hot, hot Reload is not just for .NET 6 developers. It works on multiple project types and all .NET versions starting from 4.6 and higher, .NET Framework 4.6. Uh, that support edit and continue. And .NET 6 is the most optimized for the best hot reload experience. It has ability to use hot reload when starting the app without the debugger and other latest improvements and features. So still best hot reload we got in .NET 6. And uh, let's talk about, actually, let's talk about what is new in WPF specifically with .NET 6. So, WPF, we have XAML Live Preview, and I'll show that you in a minute what is that. But we received requests to, um, now our users complain that when they're building applications on one monitor, it's not always convenient to switch between running code and uh, Visual Studio, because with Hot Reload, now you can edit your code and you see changes in the running application, but when you edit the code, you need to see your application. And we brought application inside Visual Studio in one of the Visual Studio windows. And we also added some tooling on top of it for enabling pixel perfect UI. We have a quick actions picture. Uh, that is a light bulb that appears next to your control in the designer and allows you to get access to most uh, commonly used properties inside the designer. So you can change basic uh, properties with one click. 
Uh, we have design time data and sample data. I'll show you that in a second as well. Uh, we have XAML binding improvements. So you can see here in the on the picture, we modified the dialog, we added ability to uh, get a quick access to uh, commonly used scenarios. We have IntelliSense improvements for MVVM scenarios, XAML hot reload, uh, we updated a XAML designer for .NET Framework projects, meaning that, okay, we had our older designer for .NET Framework. Then we built a new out-of-process designer for .NET Core projects, and now we finally moved to one designer that is a new out-of-process designer that now supports .NET Framework in .NET Core. So what that means, you get better performance, you get more reliable designer, a uh, more convenient designer for you to use. You probably won't notice anything, but behind the scenes, that's what's happening. Now we're back to one code uh, for the designer for both .NET Core family and .NET Framework. And let's go to Visual Studio and see all those new features that I just talked in action. So. Here I have air quality application that shows quality of air in different cities. Recently, we had some troubles in the US with uh, fires and very bad uh, quality of the air where we needed to stay home. We needed to make sure like the quality is okay for opening windows and so on. So that inspired me to build this very simple demo app that will show air quality for each city that I will bring into my uh, form. And um, I am getting air quality with this following data template, right? And the way I do it, I have very basic UI in place. I do it, I'm putting grid, I'm putting this data binding, I pass to AQI quality, etc. Well, what I see in the designer, I see nothing because my data comes from data binding. And now you have a feature that allows you to see that inside your designer without running your application. This feature is called design time data. And the way it works, you can add any property with D column and that will mock data in your design time. So it would not take effect on your real application on your binary, but if you wanna do some edits here, and you can also set certain text, you can set certain properties, values, anything you want, that will never affect your production code. And I just set some mock data here, test data, I see it immediately in my designer. All right, awesome, I can see how that looks, if I'm happy with UI, and I'm mostly happy, but I probably want to make this pop out. This is our next feature, it's called design, uh, Quick Actions. Quick Actions is the slide bulb that appears next to uh, control, and when I expand it, I get access to the most commonly used properties for this specific control. We got stats and we try to put something that you're using the most for this control and okay let me try to make it oh it was bold already let me try to make it slightly bigger right yeah i think i am happy with how it looks now and i'm ready to run my application Okay, and now I need to find this app or somewhere on my other screen. I'm on 1 million open windows. Here it is. All right, the application runs, but something is wrong. I'm expecting to see my cities here and it's empty. That means something is broken. And you know, that's what usually happens when I develop applications. So I'm gonna debug it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to debug it while it's running and I will make my changes to the running application. The way I'm going to do it here, I have only one screen, so I will use that XAML live preview feature. So let me move the slide.
I'm going to type XAML live preview. Here it is. Open. And this window shows my real running application exactly the way it looks. I'll bring it here to show you guys. And now, okay, perfect. I can put it somewhere. It can be underneath my Visual Studio. I see it right here. It's a standard Visual Studio window, so I can dock it, I can resize it, and can make it wherever I prefer to have it. Another great thing, I can zoom in and zoom out, and it has some additional tooling. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix my app. Okay, yeah, I see here I forgot item source. So I'm going to add this, and I will add binding path. And you know what would be nice? If I could get IntelliSense on this path, because I have my view models, there's like Visual Studio should be able to do that. And now it can, if I go here and add set design the data context, that is another feature that we have. Now I'm getting IntelliSense. Perfect. And now I got my cities. I got my cities in the running application. Amazing. Now I can really use my uh, XAML Live Preview feature. I can zoom in, see if everything is aligned. There are some rulers that will show me the distance to the top, to the left. All right, great. I can even change the color for those rulers. I can make them, if I add too many for my designer purposes, and then I want to uh, hide them and then bring them back, I can do that. I can even get some information on the controls. I can see the borders. I can get the size, font, foreground, and so on. So that's something you also asked us because you liked some features from Blend and you wanted to be able to have the tooling for Pixel Perfect UI. Now you have it in XAML Live Preview. All right. I'm happy with everything except one thing, you know. I noticed that all my cities, for some reason, are Los Angeles, which doesn't seem right. So that seems that is issues in my data provider, and I'm going to fix that. OK, yeah, I added some test code that overrides every city to Los Angeles. So I'll fix this. And did you notice now I'm changing C sharp code? Before I was changing XAML code. So we got XAML hot reload. Now I'm changing C sharp code. And uh, my changes, once I saved it, they are already applied. The thing, the, the question that I'm getting asked why application has not updated. Well, application hasn't updated because I need to trigger that code pass that triggers the change, right? And when I'm getting my um, cities, uh, that's when I'm clicking refresh button. So I'm going to click refresh button now. Let me bring my app so you can see that what I'm doing. I'm going to click re refresh button. All right. Did I save that? One second. What's this? Open out panel. That's not real. So this is the hot reload. Um, the hot reload menu and uh, oh there is a check hot reload on file save so when once i do that now i don't need to hit hot reload i can say just save features and now you can see that all my cities are actually real cities instead of that los angeles the reason why I needed to hit a uh, refresh button because I needed my uh, program to go through the code that updates the UI one more time. But the changes were already there. That change in the data layer were immediately there once we uh, hit save. All right. I'm happy with this app. I'm going to stop it and go back to my deck for now. alien different windows. Okay, now let's talk about WinForms. What is new in WinForms? 
Well, we got some new features and of course we worked on the designer. So we got application wide font, default font, and that is a special story. Once we um, updated to .NET Core, we were able to address the request that we heard from you guys for many years. The thing is that long, long time ago, default font was uh, Microsoft Sans Serif. Then uh, with time, it changed to Sigoi UI, but in WinForms, it still remained Microsoft Sans Serif for many years because we couldn't change, we couldn't make some breaking changes in .NET Framework. Switching to .NET Core model, we were able to introduce changes without being afraid to break older applications because they can be on .NET Framework and you are able to have different versions on the same machine and choose for each app which version you want to target. So we made the switch for the font and the problem was that for some older apps was very intense UI and pixel perfect UI, now with the default font, everything did not look as good as before. And you ask, okay, I wanna go back to the older font. So now we provided uh, API and the way you can change your default font once it's one, li uh, one liner for all your applications. And everywhere where you override the font, when you specify the different uh, font, it's gonna be what you specified, but the fonts that are using default setting will be set to whatever font you want it to be. And I'll show that in the demo soon. We also got accessibility improvements. And we got a new data binding. We're still working on that feature, but we're investigating the ways how these days developers prefer to use data binding in their modern applications. And of course, we're working on high DPI fixes. For the designer, we got a strip control editing from the designer. So before that was enabled only from the code. Now we added the way how you can change it in the designer for menu strip, context menu strip, status strip, tool strip, and other strip controls. We got uh, a lot of fixes for uh, to improve the re reliability of the designer and now it is much better. Uh, we've made improvements in multiple control editing scenarios. So now if you're selecting 30, 40 controls, you can easily move them around, copy paste, etc. The Before in the previous version of the designer, we had some issues, so we fixed that. Um, we got a uh, third party controls SDK. We're working with all uh, with third party vendors and making sure that their controls have a clear pass in our latest versions of WinForms. And if you are a control vendor, it doesn't matter if you're a large company or you're just one dev and you have any uh, questions of how to enable your controls, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to work with you. I'm happy to set up uh, meetings to give you documentation, guidance, whatever you need for your success. And what else? Oh yeah, we made improvements in the designer load. So previous version was loading when the first time you're opening the form, it took some time. Now it's much faster and it's done async. So you can start working on other projects while your form is loading, it doesn't block you. Okay, another thing that I wanted to talk in especially WinForms area is the performance wins. So we uh, improved our code and we did some major refactoring in WinForms. We reduced the amount of allocations per redraw. And here you can see that these are, oh, not here, but here. These are, um, same applications, one is running on .NET Framework and exactly same is running on .NET 6. And for example, for a data grid view, it takes 262 kilobyte. And for .NET 6, oh, sorry, going back, it's only 77, then 102, only 14, 76, only seven. So that all you get by simply switching from .NET Framework to .NET 6. This is how much faster and less memory you will get just from changing the framework underneath your 
application. Just a reminder that is not new in .NET 6. We got it earlier, but we got a new task dialog. That's a new control, and we have not been adding much in WinForms before, but now as we made it open source, we received lots and lots of contributions from open source community. And this control was done by our open source contributor, Konstantin Prizer. So he suggested the feature, he created pull request. He was joining us on our API review meetings and we worked together and we added his control into .NET 5. So that is a message box on steroids. You can now customize a message box to the way you like it. You can enable everything there, like footers, headers, check boxes, as you can see, whatever, many pages. It's amazing control and we are very thankful to the contributor and to many others who helped us develop WinForms. So if you are, thank you very much. If you're thinking about it, it's super easy. You can just go to WinForms repository, GitHub WinForms, and we have issues that are marked up for grabs. Feel free to get them, work on them. Maybe we'll work together and Another new control, also we added it in .NET 5, that is a web view. So if you develop with WinForms, you're probably familiar with web browser, but that one was using older um, browser. And web view 2 is the latest control that is Chromium based. Now you can add uh, web content inside your desktop application. As you can see here, I have a WinForms app and I just inserted Twitter there. So if you need some web capabilities inside your desktop, that's super easy to do with WebView 2. WebView 2 is available for WPF as well as WinForms, and it is distributed as Microsoft.Web.WebView 2 NuGet package. You simply add it to your application and you have a full uh, designer support. You see it in the toolbox, you drag and drop, you work with it like with a regular control. Okay, we made some uh, accessibility improvements. So making Windows Forms application more accessible to more users is one of the big goals for our team. And in .NET 6, we improved the way how assistive technologies such as narrator or test, test automation can interact with the controls. In WinForms, we do it, we are adding UI providers to the controls, and that way narrator, for example, can interact with those providers. In .NET 6, we added UI providers for checkbox clicks, uh, uh, check, checked list box, I'm sorry, uh, linked label, panel, scroll bar, top control, track bar. We also improved narrator announcement in data grid view, error provider, and list view. Uh, another thing that we did, we added keyboard tooltips for the tab controls tab page and tree views tree node. And we imp improved color contrast in the following controls. Uh, that's checked uh, list box, data grid view, label property grid view, tool strip button, etc. So as uh, we are receiving many requests for making applications accessible and we also realize that's a big responsibility to make sure that all that you guys are building is accessible and you don't need to spend time on it. We are trying to take care of everything for you. Another thing, high DPI fixes. Yes, that was a big issue with WinForms and we are fixing it starting from .NET Core, uh, .NET 5, .NET 6. And in this release, we made some progress in supporting pair monitor v2. Uh, so now we can create controls in the same DPI awareness as the application, and we can correctly scale container controls and MDI child windows in per monitor v2 mode in most scenarios. Of course, there are still few specific scenarios like anchoring and some controls like month's calendar, uh, where the experience remains subpar. But you can see improvements from the left to right from .NET 5 to .NET 6, so we're getting there. Uh, we also, and that is the topic of the whole .NET, is simplification. It's less code on your screen. You're trying to hide everything that is not needed. And in .NET 6 and C-sharp 10, 
brought a lot of simplifications to the way how we write code. And uh, of course, we supported all those changes in our desktop platforms. So in WinForms, um, we supported the um, uh, implicit usings and file scope namespaces. So the code looks less busy and easier to read. You can see from left to right, I'll also show that briefly in the demo. And uh, last thing before I jump to demo, when you type .NET new before, you would see all that huge list and we simplified that as well. Now that's the only thing you see and all other um, templates are also available, but we've heard that this huge list is very confusing. People are getting lost, especially those who are just getting started programming. Now it's more clear and we have WinForms, WPF, Console, Class, Blazor, Server, Razor, Maui, if you have it installed on your machine. All right, and let's jump into demo and look at WinForms. Second, let me switch gears here. Okay, let me just make sure that I'm using the right version of my app because I have a few. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, let me bring this up here. And what I have here, that's the same air quality, but I added a WinForms hat. So that's our WPF. And I also added here, I added air quality dot WinForms. So I try to put similar UI there and um, yeah, let's, the first thing that we'll do, this is my um, air quality WinForms. Uh, actually, let me open project file. Yeah. And let me show you implicit usage. So that's the feature I was talking about. I can add implicit usings. Yes, there you go. And set it to true. And now many usings are not required anymore. So let me save that. Such usings as system or system windows forms. Well, you know what? Visual Studio should figure out that's a WinForms application. Of course, I need that. Uh, there's no need to put it in your file. There's no need to overwhelm you with that. So now I can remove those usings and ta-da, that's just that. Another simplification that we have in .NET 6 and WinForms supports that as well, that you can just add semicolon after your namespace and you can move everything 
is my shortcut. Basically, you can move everything one uh, layer up. You don't need another curly brace, bracelet, braces. It will just work. All right. Then next thing, default font. We have an API for this, and you can do application, set default font, specify what you want, which font you want for that. Or you can do even better way. You can go to your project file here. Oh, that's my form. Let's go back to project file. And you can specify this font here as a default font. I'll get you the, um, the signature later. I don't want to spend too much time on it. And if you uh, specify it in project file, then it will be applied to the designer and to the runtime. So what actually I'm going to do, let's do, uh, I have a details form here. So when I click on the city, I can get some basic um, information about that city pollution. And let's say I want to switch this. This is all default font. I want to switch that to um, this. Sorry. Rose. That should be very curly, so we should be able to immediately see the difference. Let me run the app. And Oh, there, there it is. I got this form. Yep. As you can see, all my default fonts now look very different. Perfect. Another thing that I wanted to show you. Oh, and by the way, while I'm working, did you notice that I have a different color for tabs? I have like orange, purple. Wait one second. Let me exit this one. I have, there's orange, there's blue. That is a new feature that we have. It's super easy to enable it. You can go to tools, options, tabs and windows, and here choose colorize document tabs. I did it by project. You can also do it by file extension. So that's a delighter that I really enjoy. Another thing related to this delighters is theming. We supported a lot of different themes. You can go to uh, tools, theme, get more themes. And now I'll bring this window here. Here you can choose between many, many different themes. Let's look at this one. Oh, this one doesn't have a color, but some of them are very colorful. Interesting. Yeah, so to get it simply download and it will appear in your Visual Studio. You can switch to any coloring theme of your preference. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you because I also want to talk about porting is a new way of data binding. And in WinForms, we enable a way you can data bind to your um, application. Uh, you can, for example, here, that is a label. I can go to data binding and actually, I have data binding already in place, but on the text, you can open the menu and you can click Add New Object Data Source. There you will pick your data source. I already picked it. And the only thing I need to do, um, let me open my form. Here, code you need to pass that in your uh, form. So I'm passing city air quality. That's the data I wanted to show. And now once I run it, instead of that provider label, I should have information about my weather provider. All right, let's see. Where is my form? Oh, there it is. Sorry, I'm navigating between so many windows, one under another, and there it is. All right. Also, I have a very different scaling factor. I have a huge monitor underneath, 48 inch with one 
DPI and scaling factor and the presentation monitor. So yeah, Windows is doing pretty good for high DPI in the conditions I put it under. Uh, so yeah, here's the data binding. That's a new way you can data bind to your model, view model. All right, let's go back here. And let's brief, very briefly talk about new offerings in a desktop world. We have .NET Multi-Platform App UI, or for short, .NET MAUI. That's another way how you can do desktop uh, in .NET. And that option is cross-platform. It's um, evolution of Xamarin forms designed to help you develop uh, deliver high performance cross platform native desktop and mobile apps all from a single code base. So you can write it once and you can have it on your mobile devices, on your desktop. Uh, we support um, Windows, Mac, uh, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. On Windows, we are using WinUI underneath. We are using Mac Catalyst for Mac OS and, of course, iOS and Android. And .NET MAUI abstracts all those frameworks into a single framework built on .NET 6. And .NET MAUI on Windows supports WinUI, as I said, allowing these apps to use all the newest native features on supported versions of Windows. And that means you can build all these applications for any device from a single code base and project system. Instead of learning different stacks and languages for each, you can use one language and one set of libraries and one UI stack for all of them. Uh, it will be released uh, in spring 2022, but the preview version is already available. It's preview 10. It has Windows app SDK dependencies they are fully included, more controls, including collection view, indication view, etc. It has a performance improvements for Android startup, layout improvements, and many bug fixes. And the best Visual Studio for MAUI is Visual Studio 17.1 Preview 1. So not the GA, but the preview version, because we added a lot of stuff there since GA. And another desktop I wanted to talk about is a hybrid apps with Blazor and .NET MAUI. So we first supported Blazor on server, then in the browser with WebAssembly, and now we're extending it again so you can write Blazor hybrid apps. This means you can create hybrid client apps which combine web and native UI together in a single native client application. It is primarily targeted at web developers that want to provide rich client and offline experience for their users. And Blazor Hybrid Apps is built on top of .NET MAUI. So it's .NET MAUI and then WebView 2 that we talked about already. And then we're hosting Blazor in that WebView 2 in .NET MAUI. And it relies on UI stack for a native application container and native controls uh, should you want to use them. Blazor uh, desktop app have full access to the machine. So you can do things like call native APIs, access the file system, write multi-threaded applications, all with the high performance and optimal memory consumption you get with .NET. And you can do this with pure web technologies. So if you want the combination of web and desktop, that is a, an option for you. And these scenarios will also be supported with .NET MAUI releases early next year. And now I wanted to spend some time about uh, on talking uh, how you can upgrade to the .NET 6 to the latest .NET. There are two options. If you're upgrading from .NET Core, it's super easy. In Visual Studio, you simply open, uh, go to Properties, Target Framework. There is a combo box. You change it to .NET 6. And that is true between .NET Core, .NET 5, .NET 6, because that's one family of the platform. So you can switch back and forth very easily. Another uh, thing is when you're trying to, sorry, when you're trying to port fr from .NET Framework to .NET 6. So one thing I wanted to mention, uh, we have a breaking changes uh, documentation. So let me open this breaking changes to show you very quickly how you can use that. So 
for .NET 6, we have many um, areas. Let's go, let's find WinForms, for example. These are breaking changes from .NET 5 to .NET 6. We have just a few, and you can see binary compatibility or source compatibility. You can go to the change. You can see this was the old behavior. This is the new behavior. We got some simplifications and change category. Why did we change it? And recommended actions. But we try to make .NET 6 very compatible with .NET 5. So all those changes, they probably won't affect you. And you just have a very easy transition from .NET 5 to .NET 6. If there is something, then you have a guidance what to change. And it should be very quick change. All right. Now, how do you port from .NET Framework to .NET 6? Well, in this case, migration is much harder because .NET Framework was built many years ago, and then we re-architected .NET Platform with .NET Core completely. It's a completely different uh, gears are in the underneath. So we cannot just switch it in Visual Studio like you do it between .NET Core family of platforms, but we have a tool for you that can help you upgrade and um, move to .NET 6. We released the .NET Upgrade Assistant that helps you modernize older .NET Framework code bases. It's command line, it is a command line tool that gives you step-by-step -step instructions for upgrading to the latest version of .NET. And we've had over uh, 40,000 downloads. You know what, let's just jump into the demo and I'll show you how it works. So for this one, I have a simple demo uh, app. It's a .NET Framework application. Yes, here it targets .NET Framework 4.7. And I'm going to bring Upgrade Assistant and just run it. So I have it already on my machine, but it's super easy to get it. It's a global tool, as I mentioned. You just uh, Upgrade Assistant, install, and you get that. Uh, let's look in the help. It has a few options. So for comments, you can analyze, upgrade, or you can add your extensions. If you run analyze, it will just analyze your code, but it will not uh, do any changes. If you run upgrade, let me actually find should, like I do. To run upgrade, you simply specify the path to your solution or project, and it starts analyzing it for you. So thinking of upgrade assistant, you can really imagine an assistant that does all the work and asks you only when the decision making is needed. So here it asks, do I want to back up my project? Usually I would say yes, but to save some time here, I will say no. Uh, now we are going to convert project file to SDK style. So SDK style, if I could double click on my project here, nothing happens. To see my project file, I need to unload the project and then this is my old style project file. I have a very simple app and yet it's many pages of this uh, XML code. With .NET Core and later we switch to new project file uh, style, it's SDK style and that one is much easier to read, much nicer to work with. And um, there's my Great assistant, I'll bring it back. I'm gonna upgrade to this SDK project style now. So another good thing about this upgrade upgrading, you can do one step at a time. You can go to Visual Studio, you can make sure everything works, everything is fine, then you can continue. All right, I just converted project file style to SDK. This step is complete. Now I'm gonna clean up NuGet package reference going to proceed with that. Then we will update TFM. Updating TFM, it's a target framework moniker. So now we're actually switching from .NET Framework to .NET 6. And the tool detected that the best match for us as for TFM is .NET 6-Windows, because we have a WinForms application, and that is the uh, TFM for that. So I'm going to press continue and we're going to update NuGet packages now. 
So Upgrade Assistant works for many types of applications. It's WinForms, WPF, but also SP.NET, Console, et cetera. And uh, okay, now WinForms specific stuff. So it detected that uh, there is a default font API that has changed. So it's gonna update the default font. Great. And inform source update. Press anything, finalizing. All right, I think we're done. We're moving to the next project. In my case, I had only one project. So that is it. Press and to continue. Upgrade has completed. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio, reload the project and see how that works. Okay, immediately when I click on my project, I can see a new SDK style project file, which is great, right? It's much smaller. And when I click right click properties, now you will see it targets .NET 6 instead of .NET framework. So now it runs on .NET 6. The upgrade wasn't too bad. Let me run the app, make sure it works exactly the same way. But now it's on .NET Framework, so on .NET 6, so it has much better performance. It has all the benefits of .NET 6. Where is my application? Is oh, there it is. I found it. Yep, it runs, and here. This app runs on 6.0.0, so it runs on .NET 6. Perfect. So with that, we are at a time. And just very quickly, here are not supported in .NET 6 areas. And the uh, recommendations so for ASP.NET web forms, we recommend Blazor or Razor pages. For server-side WCF, uh, consider Web API, gRPC, or Core WCF. And for remote, and consider Stream JSON RPC or gRPC or Web API. And all um, right, get started today. Get .NET 6. Get new Visual Studio. Use Upgrade Assistant. Definitely move your applications if you have anything in .NET Framework. And feel free to ask me any questions if you have. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions, uh, if that is possible. I'm not sure how we'll do it in this setup, but if there is moderator, you guys can help me. Otherwise, otherwise, I guess you can just reach out to me on Twitter and ask your questions. I'm happy to talk to you. Thank you so much. <laughs>